Hello everybody, welcome to the second video in Mobidux tutorial series. How to deploy a centralized cryptocurrency trading platform using open source software. In this video, I will show you how to provision database and key management service for our secret storage. I will also create an F3 bucket for user uploaded documents. Database and secret storage are critical infrastructure points and should be deployed in the most secure and reliable manner. For database, we use MySQL, so for the mainnet production environment, MySQL is deployed using Cloud SQL products available from compatible cloud providers. In our scenario, we are using AWS. Cloud SQL is a necessity coupled with convenience, allowing us to enable frequent backups and easily scale the database. For the difference in testnet and staging and deployment, watch our dedicated video by clicking on the pop-up banner. For secret storage, we use an open source product developed by HashiCorp, Vault. Vault allows us to generate one-time passwords and enables 2FA functionality. The Vault in itself is a secure storage that is sealed by a certain number of keys. However, there is a downside to this. For example, when a container is dropped, Vault becomes sealed and your users can get locked out. Uh, in order to prevent this, we use a key management service that will allow us automatically unseal Vault on restart. We will also create an S3 bucket. This bucket is used for storing user uploaded document during the KYC process. Without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, so here I've prepared two files that will be helpful when creating uh, the outlined resources. So the first file is just a couple of blocks from the app.yml uh, that uh, outline the configuration needed for database, for S3 bucket storage and for Vault as well. And we also have here a Vault policy that will be needed to um, be created on AWS. Uh, that's just the specifics um, of um, AWS configuration. Uh, right, so let's start with creating a database and we can do it right here. Uh, so we need a standard database, MySQL, um, production, and it's going to be, let's call it prodDB. A username will be uh, root and the password, let's generate one, copy it here. New standard two CPUs, eight gigs of RAM is fine uh, for now. We can later on we can upgrade it if we need to, so that's uh, no problem. Uh, allocated storage, uh, let's start with 250 and then we can also upgrade later on. Uh, we can enable storage auto scaling, I think that's fine. Uh, why not? Uh, then, a standby instance. Um, is recommended for production usage. For this project, it's just starting up, so um, I don't think it's necessary. You can always add it later on. Uh, we use the default VPC and the subnet. Uh, we don't want public access because we want it to be accessible only to our EC2 instances uh, where we have the application running. Uh, so we'll choose existing group as well. Uh, password authentication, I think that's good. Uh, the only thing is that MySQL version, uh, we want 5.7 because that's what we were using. So let's use this one. And uh, that's it. Uh, we're happy. So let's create it. And uh, now here in my app.yml, I will just save this configuration. And when we are going to be deploying, uh, I will use it. So I need the password that I've copied. Uh, which I believe I should have, uh, but I don't seem to have. All right, guys, I freaked out a bit because I thought that I didn't copy the master password for the database and it's like lost forever and I have to create it from scratch, but uh, no big deal. And that's, that's actually a tip for you. So if you're going to be using AWS and you are just in the process of creating the database, and you think that you forgot to copy the password, it's actually available right here. So uh, I did just that and I'll paste it in here. Uh, and then now we also need to wait for the DB to be created because we will need um, an endpoint URL uh, for our config as well. Uh, I'll let it 
do its thing and uh, while the database is being created we'll uh, move over to KMS. So let's create a key for KMS here. Uh, we want symmetric KMS. Uh, that's all good. All good. Uh, let's give it an alias. So KMS vault with site is fine. Let's copy this just in case. Uh, right. So uh, now in order for this key to work, uh, we need to um, also create uh, a role uh, for our EC2 instance uh, to be able to access this key. So let's first uh, finish off with the key. Now this is standard policy, so all good. Let's finish off. Right, and we need this key ID for our configuration. So let's go right in here and paste this key ID. Okay, now once that is done, we also need to go to IM right here. And we need to create a role. So let's do that uh, for EC2 instance and then EC2. Next permissions, we need to create a policy. Now with JSON and I have it prepared right here so uh, no problem this will be available to you as well uh, so you can use it that's where I was and let's paste it in here a review policy and let's call it vote EC2 policy that should be good and let's create it Right, so we have our policy. Now uh, we, were, we wanted to create a role as well that will use this policy. So let's do that. So let's create the role for EC2. And we want our world policy. So let's find it. That's it. Next. Tags we don't need. And our role name will be EC2 world KMS. Um, I already kind of have a similar name, so I'll go vault ec 2 kms Now let's create that role. All right, so we have this role and we will use it when we're going to be creating our EC2 instances. And I'll just, that will be in the next video, so you will see me uh, utilizing that. Uh, now let's check out our DB and let's see. Okay, so looks like our DB is created. We have an endpoint, which is great. And that's what we need to save here. Mm, so let's do just that. Okay, so we can be consider, we can consider this part done for now. Now let's move on to S3 bucket and storage. Now I'm uh, not sure that I've mentioned already, we need this storage for our documents. Uh, the ones that will be uploaded by the user, they will be saved uh, on this bucket. So let's go ahead and create that bucket. Let's create it. And bucket name docs KYC bit size. Sorry for the spelling. Uh, all right. So we want public access. Bucket versioning. Um, I think it's needed. So I acknowledge. Let's create the bucket. Now we have that bucket created, which is great. Uh, so let's also in here paste what will be the bucket name. Now uh, we need to create a bot user that will be able to access this bucket and just the bucket itself. So we go to users, add user, username, let's call it bot KYC S3. And we want programmatic access, permissions. So we want to give it, um, we want to attach policies. Let's go to S3 and let's give it S3 access. We don't need tags. So that's bot KYC S3. Let's create it. Now we have access key and secret key here. So that's what we need to save in here. So that's our access key. All right. And just like that, uh, now everything is uh, 
created. We have all of the configuration saved right here. Uh, this will be utilized when we will be deploying the applications. So save it for now and we'll use it in the later video. That's it for the second tutorial video. I hope you enjoyed it and don't forget to hit the like button. Uh, in the next video, I will show you how to create two virtual machines and provision Docker Swarm. I think you will enjoy this. Uh, leave your comments and subscribe to MobyDuck's channel. Most importantly, join our Telegram community. The link will be in the description. Have a great day, everyone. See you next time.